Hallelujah. Let Lord Jesus shine forth. Good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And, and I don't want it to be heartbreaking or anything, but we do have a privilege of having Rob Christian with us. He is joining us from the Skype. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. And with you, dear sister, God bless you, God bless your audience and subscribers who are watching. Thank you for allowing me to be here. So, um, just before we kind of um, get on how you are doing stuff, can I just ask, um, beloved ones in the chat, can you give me sound check for Rob Christian? Because from my side, you're supposed to be hearing echo. I don't know if yeah. you are hearing echo. Does Rob Christian yeah. gives you echo? Please say no. Rob Christian, can you say a couple of more sentences? Yes. Yes, this is a test. This is a test. I hope my sound is really coming loud and clear. Echo is on Rob's part. Yeah, there is echo. Oh. Mm. Okay, so you said you are wearing earphones. Yes. That's strange. Is, is it really bad? bad? So one of... Can you speak again? Yes, this is a test. This is a test. Okay. Mic check. So, because now we are doing lots of tests, so let's not make that confused. Can mm -hmm. you do your sound check as? Can you do your sound check as um, Islam is false religion? And then we get to see if that is a con. Uh, I think Islam is a really bad uh, and dark cult and Muhammad is a fake prophet. Stay away from Islam, brother. Okay. Um, can I get a confirmation? Was it, was it okay? That was better. Okay. That was not so good. Worst. Worse. Come, oh. Come on, come on, come on, come. Okay. Oh, so people are saying better, so. Okay, I'll go with Phil. Phil says it is better. Okay. Okay, it's fixed, Silva. Thank you. And servant girl, thank you. Okay. So, uh, now let's start from beginning. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And with you, I, I hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, all the people who are watching, God bless them. God bless you and your amazing ministry, sister. Uh, I hope uh, God will give you... A uh, long and healthy life, so you can do what you're doing. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, brother. And as I said, it is privilege for us to have you. Reason it is privilege because I am already hearing and assuming that you are still breathing out and breathing in. That means you are alive. I heard that you are bringing corruption to the land. So that yes. that's what we are going to talk about it. But before we do that. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions if um, I don't think anyone doesn't know you, but in case anyone doesn't know you. Brother, mm -hmm. um, you speak Arabic, correct? Yes, that's true. So therefore you are like double enemy of Islam. But so you speak Arabic. Um, I am assuming you read the Quran and you know like yes. Quran is like written with wonderful language and he's just so beautiful. Why are you Christian, not Muslim? Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, Allah, Allah himself made me a Christian because remember, if we go to the Quran, for example, uh, and we see uh, ayahs like uh, chapter 9, Surah at tawbah ayah 51, chapter 9, ayah 51, it says, nothing shall ever happen to us except what Allah has ordained for us. So everything that happens, happens because of Allah's doing. So Allah made me a Christian and at the same time, he made me speak Arabic to expose him and his fake prophet. So it's all because of Allah, according to Islam. So we should blame Allah, not me. Okay, Allah made you to be, um, live as a Christian. But let's say, sake of the argument, Allah does not exist. And all uh, Muslims are kind of about to come to that judgment. Why are yes. you Christian today? Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, uh, and I don't want to brag about it, uh, I come from a 
really old uh, generation of the early Christians. We go way back to the period uh, that the Book of Acts is talking about uh, uh, from Antioch. Antioch, the first Christians, we are from there, to be honest with you. So uh, my grand, 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 grandfathers and mothers were Christians. Uh, and th through all the persecution in the Middle East, thanks to the Lord, uh, we kept our faith. We didn't... Uh, become cowards uh, uh, and uh, afraid to become Muslim because remember Islam came with the sword of Muhammad uh, Islam conquered under the banner of Islam uh, countries like Egypt Syria Turkey uh, Iraq these were all Christian uh, Syriac Orthodox Christian uh, and uh, Coptic uh, countries so but thanks to the Lord uh, we're still Christians and uh, we never were afraid to uh, to keep uh, our faith so and because of the Arabic language that was forced on us now we can use it against Allah and Muhammad in the court of law basically that's in a nutshell Th thank you very much for that brother um, another practical question so you mm -hmm. are Christian who also spends time to critic Islam actually not critic Islam but respond to um, critic Islam gives towards Christian faith and towards Christ. Um, can you tell me about little bit about your daily um, Christian life? So how do you do your Bible readings? Um, how do you do your uh, scripture? How do you do your? How do you? What kind of spiritual disciplines do you have? Uh, well, uh, of course, I read the Bible. Uh, not to be honest with you, not on daily basis, but. Uh, what I what I've learned for the last 15 years is that uh, if you want to become a, a polemicist or an apologist, you need to learn uh, uh, your Bible first because uh, many Muslim apologists, for example, will try to attack the Bible. So to have a good foundation, you need to know the Bible. So I study the Bible and I study Quran, Hadith, Tafsir and whatnot to uh, expose uh, Islam. And uh, remember... Uh, we are not, uh, as Christians, some people think that we are hippies or maybe Christ was hippie. No, uh, Christ was bold uh, and we have uh, we are allowed to use righteous anger. And I'm people who know me and are following my videos and ministry. They know that I can be really angry sometimes, but we are allowed to use righteous anger. And we are certainly commanded to expose false teaching if we read our Bible carefully. So, you know, a lot of. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the West think that Christianity is all about respect, but respect must be earned. And when we see the teaching of Islam and Muhammad, we see that it lacks respect, it lacks respect towards anyone who is not a Muslim. So, if we read our Bible carefully, we are allowed, according to Christian biblical teaching, we are allowed to expose Muhammad and we are allowed to expose Islam. And Muslims who think, and they always use this, you are not like Christ-like. You have no idea what who Christ was. You have no idea uh, when, when, when Christ went to the evil Sanhedrin leaders. He wasn't uh, a, a hippie. He was, he was a warrior, right? And we are following his examples. We are Christians. We are followers of Christ. What he does, that's what we do. Thank you very much for that, brother. So, um, I think what we will do is... Mm -hmm. um, we will talk about um, what's wrong with you that you are bringing corruption to the land. But before that, let me just give a little bit house rules um, to those um, individuals who are with us. Um, can I just encourage everyone, if you want to get my attention from the chat, please put at sign in front of DCCI Ministries. And that will come in a color code on my screen and I will get to see that. Um, we, all the questions, comments are very welcome, but please do not abuse my chat. Abusing chat means you are copying and pasting the same thing again and again and again and again, and you are doing that within 60 seconds. And once you do that, I think you will get the attention of my um, attention of my um, admins, and they will uh, probably time you out. And um, I'll encourage you, even though Rob Christian speaks Arabic, please keep your comments in the language of English. That will help everyone. Uh, yes. With that in note, um, I think I'll 
I'll ask uh, Rob Christian to pray for us before we get to hear the corruptions in their land. Is that okay, brother? Yes, uh, that would be amazing. Uh, so, you know, it's a good habit to start with a nice prayer. Uh, so uh, our stream, uh, your stream can be uh, blessed and uh, we can do this in the name of uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So pray with me, people. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing me to do another live stream again with our dear sister Hatun. Please, Lord, bless our audience, all the admins and the subscribers, and bless our dear sister Hatun and her amazing ministry, uh, DCCI Ministries. Jesus, we truly believe that you are risen, and you are risen indeed. Al-Masih qam, haqqan qam. Al-Masih qam, haqqan qam. Truly, Jesus is risen. Uh, Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Lord, fill our dear sister Hatun and myself with your Holy Spirit and loosen our tongue today. And guide us so can we can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame. Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that, brother. Uh, Thank you. So, brother, what is wrong with you? What is wrong what, with me? What is wrong with you that you are bringing corruption in the land what yeah, have like you I done said, uh, what have you done yeah yeah like i said uh if we look uh to the islamic uh, we don't believe that allah exists but if we look to islam because muslims have to believe in the quran of allah uh we have to uh, blame allah i don't believe in allah but if we look into the quran we have to blame allah like i said chapter 9 surah the toba ayah 51 chapter 9 surah the toba ayah 51 says Say, قُلْ Nothing shall ever happen to us except what Allah has ordained for us. So, it's all because of Allah. So, if there's something wrong with me, we should blame Allah uh, uh, for me exposing him and his fake prophet in the court of law, on our live streams, on, in our videos. So, it's all because of Allah according to Islam. Again, we don't believe that Allah exists. Uh, he's nothing but uh, the pagan idol of uh, the Quraysh in Mecca. But because the Muslims have to believe it, that means we have to blame Allah for Rob Christian exposing Islam, causing fitna and corruption in the land. So what, what have you done? Like I, um, I saw some pictures, I've seen um, some short clips where uh, Muslims express their peaceful love towards you so what have you done to yeah. earn that amazing love brother yeah if you can show the first uh, image that i sent you dear sister uh, uh you see um i found out by accident to be honest with you i found out that menj the muslim apologist uh he was arrested for possession and distributing of child pornography and it really uh that video that i it was really a short video but it went viral. I had no idea that it would explode like that uh, uh, on YouTube. But it happened, and I think, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, because of this incident, uh, we gained a lot of uh, attention of, of this uh, incident that Menj created for himself and a lot of Muslims. A lot of Muslims uh, I saw unsubscribed from his YouTube channel. Uh, Around thousand people uh, left his YouTube channel. They immediately left him when they found out that he is interested in child pornography. And if you if you can read uh, uh, what is on the screen, sister, with me, it says the Muslim apologist. He uh, posted a comment. He said, and I quote: "You are a censored Rob Christian. You'll be next after David Wood." So he started to insult me, call me all kind of names, uh, and he's coming after me. Uh, and if you want to open uh, the second uh, picture, picture number two, you'll see that uh, he starts to threaten all of us who are, uh, make him uh, basically look bad. But actually, this, this the Muslim picture, should this be... This picture looks very peaceful. I think he's just getting yeah. ready to um, 
uh, kind of cut the bread or something. Yeah, it's to make us a nice Malaysian onions. dinner. Or yeah, onions. cutting onions, or maybe uh, you know he wants he wants to you know, and he says if you if you can read what it's what it says on top of the picture, it says the Muslim apologist, i.e. Menj, says, and I quote, "You are all worthless low lives censored." And he's showing us a, a really nice small kitchen knife, threatening all of us, including, of course, me. This is also towards me because I uh, uploaded that video about his arrest. Else, nobody would have know uh, that he was arrested for uh, for a long time. And they actually released him. He uh, he paid uh, money, uh, and he's now at home. I don't think he's allowed to leave the country to leave Malaysia. So he's waiting. Uh, for the investigation uh, to be uh, finished, and so we'll see what happens next. I don't, and the next picture, uh, sister. Yeah, yes, I I don't want to be mean, but those yeah. of you who live in Malaysia, and if you got kids, make sure your kids are always next to you. It's for the safety of everyone. You don't want yeah. to make sure your like don't allow your kids to go out and play the games. Yeah, and and I don't understand why more than thousand people unsubscribe from his YouTube channel because the, those Muslims should actually be happy with him because he's following Example the of Sunnah Muhammad. of Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad married in a sixty-year-old girl. He was tying her. We will talk about it later. He was tying Aisha at the age of six, and he consummated the marriage at the age of nine, according to Sahih Bukhari hadith, very authentic hadith. And here, as you see, uh, the Muslim apologist, again now towards me, he's insulting me. He says, I am coming for you, for your head, censored head, you censored Rob Christian. So he's, he will come after me and he's showing us uh, his uh, very uh, nasty finger. Lord knows where that finger used to be uh, when he was watching child pornography. But that's, you know, aside. And uh, you see what the word uh, that word uh, means. So basically, you know, he's insulting my mother. Uh, that's really that's really a shameful thing to say. But you know, what do you expect from someone who watches child pornography all day long? It's some, there is like something with um, Islamic dawa gangs. Uh, the moment you ask them question, or the moment like you kind of express your view on Islam. Your your family comes into discussion in a very bad manner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I imagine see. imagine he is dragging my mother into the into into this because he knows he cannot refute us. So he needs to insult uh, my mother. What a shame! Shame on you! Shame on uh, the mother that gave you her milk for insulting someone's mother. You should be ashamed uh, about that because you should not ever never bring in family. But, you know, uh, Muhammad Hijab did the same. He started to insult uh, David Wood and other uh, people who are exposing Islam, uh, their wives uh, and whatnot, their sisters and all that. And it's a shame. It's a shame that these Muslim apologists in 2020, when they are cornered, when they can't refute us, they have to bring our families and insult them. So what, what do you expect? What do you expect, you know? Well, I, think, I think they are thinking... Oh, if we can't answer the question, the moment we attack their family or we attack other individuals with the yeah. certain languages, everyone will forget the question and then people will move on. I think that's the idea. Once people move on, those Muslims will stuck in Islam again. I think that is the dream. But I don't want to be the dream crusher. That dream is yeah. already being crushed. People are leaving Islam thanks to... Muslim missionaries, as well as thanks to our risen Lord. Exactly, and they, by by doing these acts, by insulting our families, uh, they're showing the true colors of Islam. Because remember, Muhammad himself uh, used to insult even his own Sahaba. One of the Sahaba, actually, and this is in in their most authentic books, he was uh, being proud about uh, his family, uh, uh, about the old times before Islam, right? Uh, about Al-Jahiliyyah uh, in, in the pagan times. And what did Muhammad say to them? If you are proud about that period, go bite on your father's 
private part, right? And I'm using political correct language here. Uh, and don't use a metaphor, Muhammad said. So say it as it is. So if my, their prophet is using full language, disgusting, filthy language, what do you expect of the Muhammadans of today? Right? Not too much expect. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to move to the picture four? Yes, number, number four, please. Yeah, it's on the screen. All right. Uh, this is another uh, one of his accounts, uh, and he goes by the name of Moht Elfi Nishayam. I, I, I can't pronounce the name. Anyway, he says, I should call myself the syndicate slash S. Thanks a lot. You censored Shirin. Now, who is Shirin? That's the head officer who is leading the investigation, the child pornography investigation about Menj. This is Menj, guys. This is one of his other accounts. So he's insulting and he is threatening the police officer who is leading his arrest, his the, the investigation about it. And he continues, he says, I have... I haven't been charged yet, and already you are spreading your lies. So he, he's not only threatening her, he's also calling her a liar. I will deal with you in my own way. So what are you going to do? Are you going to use that knife? Are you going to use that kitchen knife on the police officer who arrested you, Mensch? Is that what you're going to do? This is one of his uh, latest uh, comments uh, on social media. So, you know, Mench, Mench is actually uh, uh, losing it, and uh, the people can be the judge of it. Uh, truly, there's nothing some, uh, wrong with this guy, uh, right? He does not have any mental issues, right, people? You can be the judge of that. Shall I put the next picture? Uh, yes. Um, someone expressed that, actually, the video put um, you put up made yes. the individual cry. Did he cry? I made him cry. Like because the um because the content of video. Mm. Well, uh, I only thing I did was. No, he per person was grateful you know, that person was grateful because it needed to be showed, but emotionally yes. it did affect um some individuals with the content of the video. Well, I can I can understand if you have put your uh, trust in a very old school uh, Muslim apologist like Menj, of course you're going to cry and, and leave his YouTube channel. And, and I told you before, we, we saw that at least 1,000 subscribers immediately unsubscribed from his YouTube channel after they found out that he was arrested for child pornography. I mean, why, Muslims, why are you not following and celebrating this dude? Because he is simply following the sunnah of his child molesting prophet muhammad did that so why are you why are you why are you crying why are you blaming us for i mean this guy is simply following his prophet right it is it is strange um, to see because islam reflects followers of islam reflects the character of allah and character of their prophet therefore yes. We are not surprised to see any terror which has been cast in the life of individuals as well as intentional lies and such a practice which is abusing other individuals and in here abusing children. Um, I'm uh, like it is in it seems in Malaysia it's a bit different, but in England, once you once you lie in the name of Allah once you accused in the name of Allah, once you cast terror in the hearts of individuals in the name of Allah, you get mm -hmm. to be a millionaire in England. You become more famous and more famous and more famous and having more followers. And then we get to see some individuals turn up the speakers going to be their running shoes because of that. But um, good in Malaysia, some people have little bit sense. Some people have yes. little bit sense. Yes, uh, and you know... Uh... I hope that the uh, Malaysian people are seeing our videos, they are watching our videos, and they will find out, because, you know, I think a lot of Malaysian Muslims uh, have been have been duped by this Arabic 
dark coat of Muhammad. They have no idea what the Arabic says. Even if we go, for example, if you can show the next screen, uh, you know, we, we mentioned that uh, uh, Manj, who is following the Sunnah of Muhammad, Muhammad himself, who was a pedophile, you know, he's following the Sunnah. If we, let, let, let us go to one of the rulings, one of the fatwas that a uh, Shia, uh, Shia scholar issued in one of his books, and this is the book of Khomeini, one of the most respected Shia scholars, if you if you can see the screen, guys. This is Tahrir al-Wasila. It's in, on the screen, right? Tahrir yeah. al-Wasila. Tahrir al-Wasila, volume two, so book number two, volume two, page 221 to page 222. It says, ruling number 12, it is not permissible to have intercourse before her, a child, being nine years old. But, but it in nikah, marriage, or temporary marriage. And as for all other pleasures, such as lustful touch, so sexual activity, embracing, and tying. al tafkhid the tying of someone who is younger younger than nine years old there is no problem in it even with a suckling infant wow so if you are a let's say couple months old baby you are maybe six months your old baby or let's say one or teen year old baby girl according to this fatwa you are allowed to do tying to such a baby because before nine years old that baby is not old enough to handle the manhood of a man an adult man can you so, imagine um, bro guys brother this is Shia. can, can yeah. i get the definition of what is what is that word mean tying yeah tying what, means... what is that means yeah yeah, I, I will try, you know, some people are shocked if they did never heard of this before. But it means that if an adult man marries, let's say, a two-year-old baby, that's allowed in Islam. You are allowed to even marry a just a, a baby that is just born. But because she is too young, she is a baby, for God's sake, you are allowed to put your male private part between her legs and climax to enjoy the baby sexually that's what it means but you she's too young to enter you know to consummate by doing sexual intercourse so you have to wait till she is nine years old older according to this shia fatwa from a shia scholar and this is from the book of al khomeini um i don't know if it is in your slides but also we know Muhammad practiced such a thing um, to yes. he, to he, one of his wives, but that's that's different. But it's all yeah. They call sickening. it fondling. That's they call it fondling. Yeah, yes. I Muhammad don't, uh, used to fondle. Yeah, yeah. I, I, now, I, this I, is the Shia part, right, sister? This is the Shia part. Yeah. Now let us go and see what the Sunnis have to say. So if you want to open a slide number six, and we can put it on the screen, this is a fatwa from. Which website? Islam Web. Islam Web. Basically, the number one website to go to regarding fatwas, hadith, as manat in the Arabic section on the internet. This fatwa number, is it already on the screen, sister? Yes, it is on the is screen. It's already on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fatwa number 92051. 92051. Meaning of Tying in Arabic. Fatwa date, and as you see, this is uh, 4th of May, May 4th, 2006. And guys, guess what? Because this fatwa was made publicly on the internet and it caused a huge uproar, Islam Web, the sheikh of that website, decided to remove it. So, but Thanks to the Lord, we made a screenshot and we now we can use it. So this is a screenshot, but it's already the fatwa is removed from the website. Why? Because Muslims 
cannot handle the truth and they will start to cry, how dare you to, uh, to say this as a mufti? And this is Sunni, guys, this is a Sunni website, right? Islam Hub is a Sunni. So we showed you from Shia side, this is Sunni side. Now let us read what it says. Question. So someone is asking the question. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. Can you, so he's asking the Sheikh, the Mufti of this website, can you please explain to me the thing called tying, also pro pronounced as Mufa, and you, you know the, the word. So the answer of the Mufti, it says, all perfect praise be to Allah. So now we will get the answer from the Mufti. The Lord of the worlds, he continues, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, blah, 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 and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. We ask Allah to exalt his mention as well as the, that of his family and all his companions. And he continues, the term Ufakhada means to have foreplay with the wife in between her thighs. It is reported in one narration that when the Prophet wanted to enjoy one of his wives, i.e., let's say Aisha, she was his wife at the age of six, who was in menstruation, he would put a piece of cloth on her vagina. Sorry, guys, it's on the screen. I have to read it as it is. I.e., cover it, Ibn Majah. The author of Fayd al Qadir interpreted the expression if he, who Muhammad, if he wanted to enjoy to mean having all permissible foreplay, but avoiding the vagina or the anus, like in between her thighs. Tying. And Allah knows best. So here, now you'll understand that it's not only in Shia, not only Shia are practicing it, but also Sunni Muftis are issuing a fatwa that you are allowed to do tying to your young baby bride like Aisha at the age of six to tie her because she could not handle yet to be consummating the marriage which means sexual intercourse she's far too young at the age of six so to Muhammad to split her <clears throat> in half basically I so what do you think about this sister I remember a um, couple of years ago when I took um, I did have a fatwa actually with me, and then I took uh, this topic to speakers corner, and we had a um, action of like denial, and there was a Muslims were discussing between them. Um, they expressed, yes, it's allowed in Islam. You can do it from a child who is just like born yes. to someone who already had her period, and Muslim gentleman was justifying. Like one of the Muslim guy was like upset about it, and another Muslim was justifying. But Prophet did, Prophet did to Aisha. Uh, but they were like discussing between them. One of yeah. the Muslim guy was upset about it. But as I am listening as a non-Muslim Christian, and yes. it makes me throw up, and yeah, it makes me, okay. it makes me more concern on. There is an ideology is teaching such a thing. And yes. sadly, there are billions of people are following this ideology. And it is very disgusting. Can you imagine a man who is trying mm -hmm. to put his private part in a between legs of a child? Yes. That is like, if you just try to visualize that, please don't visualize that. That's like very ugly image. But in reality, that is very much ugly. Think about a man who is like in his 50s, how his body has been developed versus a child who is like under, let's let's go in this occasion, under age nine. Even like you just yes. born, like you are, your mom is still breastfeeding, you can't even walk. Mm. And, oh, someone already decided that you are eligible for marriage. Because yes. remember Surah 65 verse 4, you can be divorced before you have your period. So what is this man who is body fully developed is doing to that child? Yeah. Because he cannot... You know, the funny thing is... Yeah. Go on, brother. Yeah. 
Yeah, the funny thing is we have a Muslim in the live chat by the name of Jason Bourne. He is too scared to use even a Muslim name, but forget about it. Mr. Jason Bourne says it doesn't say that. Well, it was on the screen and it did say that because remember, Muhammad, you cannot deny this, Muhammad married Aisha at the age of six. So she became his wife at the age of six. From that moment on, Muhammad was allowed to do tying, use his male, private male member between her legs and tie her because she was much too young. She was not nine years yet to consummate the marriage with her. So it, it does say that you liar, you deceiver. It's on the screen. We showed you the fatwa that Muhammad used to do that to his wives. Aisha was his wife at the age of six. So, so yes, Muhammad was tying Aisha by putting his pee between her legs to climax. It can, was on the screen. Can I, ask, can I ask, if it doesn't say that, what does it say, Jason? Mr. Muslim, what does it say? Does it say, oh, this baby and Muhammad is having hot chocolate? What are they yeah, doing? Yeah, so what, what was, is happening? Maybe he was drinking camel urine. Maybe that's what the issue fatwa said, uh, what the fatwa says on the screen. Yeah, if that is the camel... Muhammad was drinking camel yeah. urine. So Muhammad is yeah. drinking the camel urine between the legs of the child. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And Aisha was not married yet with Muhammad at the age of six. She was married at the age of 18, sister. Remember, that's what they always say. She wasn't, yeah. nah, she wasn't six. She wasn't eight. She was 18. Oh. She wasn't six. She was 18, brother. All right, Mr. Mr. Uh, Sheikh Yasir Kadi already debunked that once for all. If anyone is shamed of that, don't even be Muslim. But um, I'm seeing a comment here, brother. Comment this comes from Mr. Muslim Jason says, the fatwa doesn't say that. That's your own mind into the text. Of course, sorry, I'm so Thank sorry, you. I'm so sorry. Fatwa was simply saying, let's have a hot chocolate together. Fatwa was yeah. simply Sister, saying... I don't want to smoke, I don't want to smoke, I want to drink what Jason Bond smokes or drinks in the morning. Everybody saw it except him, so, you know, there's something wrong with all of us, but Jason Bond is the same one. Brother, lay down the pipe, it's not good for you. Um, maybe today you can use the denial, but sad reality is there are a billion of people are following those teachings. That means there are billion of people, billion of children who are not yet to develop. Their body hasn't developed yet, but they are going through something man is doing them. Yes. yes. Denial yeah, is see, not going to uh, happen. It you. does say the fatwa well, does. Say, yes, sister, and, and Jason Bourne is saying it doesn't say that. It does say that because it's talking about his wives. Do you see? It? Enjoy one of his wives. So it's talking about his wives, right? And he is permissible to put his m m male member between her vagina, like in between her thighs. Mufakhada, fard means thigh in Arabic, fard means thigh. So Muhammad was thighing her, he was enjoying his wife sexually. And remember, Aisha was six when she became his wife. So Muhammad was enjoying all of his wives by, when, let's say if they are menstruating, they, he used to put their, his, <clears throat> between their legs to enjoy them. And I felt she was far too young, she was six, she was far too young to enter her, to split her in half, that the, the gentleman prophet that he is, he's a true gentleman, so he waited three years, what did he do for three years? He was tying baby girl, six year, baby girl Aisha, he was enjoying her by tying her, and the proof is on the screen. This is a Sunni fatwa by a mufti. And all the details are on the screen. And as I said, guys, as I said, we had the luck that we made a screenshot because Islam what removed it because it caused a huge uproar in the Arab world. A 
massive, massive attack on their website when they, they so they had to remove it. Unfortunately, it's not there anymore. But we have the proof. Probably, um, probably the moms who saw such a fatwa, they start having more mm-hmm. concern for their children who are simply they are breastfeeding, or the father yes. who heard from his friend, from his friend or from his imam that that is being practiced. He start banging his head to wall with saying that cannot be Islamic. Muhammad will never do such a thing, and then they put lots of pressure. And then fatwa is taken down. But sadly, sadly, if you look at the basic Islamic sources, this is what you get to see. And fatwa is just a confirmation of that. Confirmation of how Islam steps in and then takes the value, dignity, and honor of humans. And in this occasion, value, dignity, and honor of females and even children. Who don't even know how to walk. Yet, a man yeah. can put his private part on that child. Yeah, and call himself a prophet of God. Wow! How dare you, man? How dare you to think that this is a prophet of God? You are insulting the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to associate Muhammad with true prophets like Moses, Abraham, and whatnot. So Muslims think, please, God gave you a healthy brain, use it, allow any mufti, don't allow any scholar to deceive you. I don't think that there is a sane person in 2020 who would use his brains and think, hey, child pornography, tying six-year-old girls, even as we saw, you can even do it to a two-year-old baby, even a six-month-old baby, because in Islam you are allowed to to marry a baby. Yes, maybe you're not allowed to enter her yet, you have to wait till she's nine, but you are allowed to tie her. You are allowed to doing mufakhad, all right? You have you are allowed to use her fahd for your enjoyment. You are allowed to use her thigh, baby thigh for your sexual enjoyment. That's Islam 101. Deal with it Muslims. Deal with it. You can't deal with it, you can't handle the truth. It's on you. So your family, your mother and your father, even your brothers and your sisters, they are in a sense biologically programmed to love you. What kind of mother, what kind of father in right mind simply allowed a man to come and put his private part on that child? Yeah, man. What What does it say about like family? Let alone, okay, there is a guy who cannot control his sexual desire who needs like urgent help but no one wants to deal with that person yeah okay let's yeah, take of the argument of, forget that yeah, what sister, parent exactly like? exactly what kind of parent you must be what kind of muslim parent you must be to know that you're going to give your daughter who is maybe two or three years old to a grown-up man to know in the back of your mind that this grown-up man maybe is a big beard like his prophet they, that the parents will know and they know that this guy is allowed to do tying to my daughter. What kind of sick parent you must be to give your young daughter to such a man to know that he's going, he's allowed to tie her because his prophet used to do that. And the muftis are giving fatwas and allowing it to happen. Right? And of course, on the other hand is... This child doesn't even know what's happening. Probably she's like crying and crying and crying and then have to, like there is no one even who can help her with all those bruises because that's not going to go away with like, oh yeah, let me just do 10 minutes fondling here or 10 minutes tightening here. It's going to cause lots of like physical damage to legs of that child. And you are okay with that? You are okay with the ideology which teaches that and you simply, yeah, let me be faithful Muslim and follow that. People, you've got to shake your brain. You've got to shake that brain and wake that brain up because so far it is very much disgusting and disturbing. Good thing is I don't know much vocabulary on that, but it's like very bad, like really, really bad. Uh, Try not to get disgusted, sister. 
Uh, you know, uh, Muslim, some Muslims can't handle, so they are in denial and they think that we created a screenshot. No, we did not create anything. We only took a screenshot. We took a selfie. Uh, by the way, back in the old times, there were no selfies in 2006. But we took a screenshot and we put it on the screen for you. So no, we, we don't lie. There's no need to lie. Go to a mufti who is, who is really honest about this question. If he has guts, he will say to you, yes, tying a girl who is younger than nine years old because she cannot handle your manhood, you are allowed to do that if her parents gave her to you to marry her. But because she's too young, you can tie her. A real mufti, right, with a PhD in his pocket, he will say, without any shame, he, he will say, yes, I can issue a fatwa because that's Islam 101. You are allowed to do that to a baby. But Muslims, it's on you. It's your funeral. Or we live in a world where Muslims don't want to do that much homework. You can simply go to the Muslim missionaries from Speaker's Corner. They will be standing up for this. They have done yeah. in the past and they will do so. Yes. That means anyone who has got a daughter, okay, keep away from Islam. Exactly. Keep away yeah. from Islam and then keep your children away from the followers of Islam. Even your babies. Keep yes. away Even from your the babies followers are not Islam. safe. Exactly. Let me tell you something, sister. I know, I personally know uh, a Christian uh, girl who fell in love with a Muslim man. Now, this Christian lady, she was married to another Christian person. And she, for some reason, they split up. They divorced, but they had a very young baby girl. She was around one and a half, two years. She has she had a baby daughter from her first marriage. So she left her Christian husband for some reason. I have no idea why. And she got herself a Muslim boyfriend. When she wasn't looking, her Muslim boyfriend, <clears throat> you know, did what he did to the baby. And, uh, you know, then the, uh, when the government found out, you know, the authorities found out, they took the baby and, but it's, it's, it's real. It's, it's happening. They know it's, you know, especially if they know that it's a Christian baby, you know, a Christian, you know, try not to get disgusted. It's, uh, no, I, I'm disgusted, but that means uh. this is sickening. Uh. It just gives me more encouragement that or more uh what would you say like more um it makes me be more conscious about the teachings of islam and then go and give the glorious gospel to muslims because this is gonna go even you deny the fatwa even you deny the teachings of muhammad this is gonna go while islam is exist nice. so we give them the our glorious gospel we introduce them our delightful god so that individuals can give it up. And then we won't see and hear the practice of this. Mm. Um, just a sorry, quick note for um, the ones in the chat. 37 different Arabic crowns. Can you just leave a quick comment? I was going to delete one of your comment because you were posting the same thing again and again. But by accident, I removed you from being moderator. Would you be kind enough to put your comment again so I make you moderator? Sorry about that. Um, brother, did you want me to move to the next picture? Yes. Uh, before we, before you move to there, yeah. now you asked me in the beginning of the live show, Rob Christian, uh, why are you causing uh, uh, corruption in the land? Well, uh, we, we told you why. Because uh, according to Islam, it's because of Allah. Allah is the one who is doing that right Allah nothing happens uh, without uh, the the choice of Allah so if Allah chooses Rob Christian according to Islam if he chooses the Rob Christian to expose him and his fake pedophile prophet then it's all because of Allah but do you know sister that Allah himself caused corruption in the land and in this case the Quran did you know that I do know that and yeah so maybe now you can show it on the screen uh, and the thing is Allah himself caused corruption in the Quran Allah himself caused corruption 
in the land. Why, Rob Christian? The reason is because if we see, if we can see the screen, the word Quran, the word Quran, the, the name of the book of Allah, Quran, appears 68, 68 times without the letter Alif. And as you see, I took a screenshot. It's uh, if, Let us compare chapter 12, ayah 2, and, and it's on the screen, chapter 2, 12, ayah 2, and chapter 39, ayah 28. Chapter 12, ayah 2, versus chapter 39, ayah 28. You see, if we go to the English, you see, uh, and I put red uh, lines underneath it, it's talking about the Quran, the Arabic Quran, Arabic Quran, you see it? We, uh, indeed, we have sent down as an Arabic Quran. Uh, the next ayah says, it's an Arabic Quran. So the word that you have to look for is Quran. 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 And as you see in ayah 2 from chapter 12, we see that the elf is missing. Right? So they they started to fix the Quran of Allah by putting a small baby elf. That small baby elf on top that you see on the, with the red line underneath it, that small thing there, that's not a, li a real letter of the Arabic alphabet. It's not a letter. But if you look to the underneath one, Quran, you see a long dagger elf. Maybe you can point your uh, 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 your mouse on it so they uh, will see what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, pro the, the, the program the, the I'm using, it, the program I'm using doesn't allow that, brother, sorry. Okay, no, no problem. So the the Quran, the, the word Quran, uh, the underneath, you will see the long dagger, the long thing that's called Alif. So basically, chapter 12, ayah 2 says Quran, Quran, and chapter 39, ayah 28 says Quran, Quran for versus Quran. So Allah causing fitna, Allah causing corruption in the land, in his Quran, he does not know sometimes Allah uses Quran instead of Quran. So even he does not know the name of his book. So Allah, why are you causing corruption in the land in your Quran? You are causing corruption in the minds of the Muslims because sometimes you call it Quran, sometimes you call your book Quran. So which one is correct, Muslims? So in and this is 68 times in the Quran. 68 times in the Quran, it's without an alif. In this one, I am afraid I am going to pick up the Muslim side mm -hmm. and I'm going to say to you, Come on, Rob Christian, you are blaming Allah for the corruption you are putting in the land just from that one letter, that one letter, which is like, looks like number one. Yes. And you are making a big deal of it. Come yes, on. Yes, of course. Don't, of course. You remember, Muslims... don't you remember Surah 533? Be careful, yeah. brother. Be careful. <laughs> they, they, they were allowed to cut off. Uh, our hands are from both sides and crucified. Yes, we should actually uh, we should actually if we listen to the ayah, we should cut off the hands of Allah, crucify Allah, according to chapter 5 ayah 33, because Allah is the one who is causing fitna, causing corruption in the land, cause, co uh, causing facade in the land. Why? Because he is the one who sometimes writes his name of his Quran, Right, the name of his book, like Quran without an alif, and other times he write it with an alif, right? Without an alif and with an alif. So Allah, why are you causing fitna? Why are you causing corruption? Why are you causing facade in the in the land? Right? And it's a big deal, sister. You ask me why? It's a big deal because Muslims always say the Quran is never changed. The Quran for the last fourteen hundred years, not one letter is changed. Not one door is changed. But here we see that at least in 68 times, 68 times, the word Quran is written with the word, without the letter Alif. 68 times without the letter Alif, the long letter that you see. So Allah, which one is correct? Is it Quran or is it Quran? I mean, this is the most important word in the whole book, right? Quran or Quran, which one is correct, Muslims? Pick your cherries, please, because Allah did not say which one is correct. There are lots of... Um, and by the way, it's half sister. This is half. This is not other version, right? Yeah, so in the, in the different Arabic Qurans, you do have this... Um, actually, not even different Arabic Qurans. In, let me bring up the Quranic manuscripts. In 
top kapı musaf you do have this this is like very big issue um so you've got this small elif versus proper elif daga elif and normal elif and yeah. all muslims are just like it's just the one letter it's just the elif why are you ma making a big deal oh it suddenly it doesn't uh it's not a problem but when we ask them is the quran true they, they will always scream without any hesitation not one letter is changed not one dot is changed dot. i said this is the quran that we're talking about this is the word quran is it with an elif or without so dot by dot letter by letter sound by sound word by word it's exactly the same but just yes. just while it's exactly the same dot by dot letter by letter sound by sound word by word just one small letter is different just one small letter not big deal not big oh, deal wait. sister are you telling are you saying basically to everybody that Allah can make mistakes in the Quran is that what you're trying to say oh well Allah, Allah doesn't know history I'm not expecting Allah to know proper Arabic brother uh, but I cannot say that Allah. I yeah, cannot maybe we say ask that. Allah and his prophet to go back to school and learn how to write the word Quran in his Quran <laughs> how, how is your schedule are you busy to teach teach them little bit Arabic I, I can find a hole in the standard narrative of holes. <laughs> um, it is it is sad actually. It is sad. So, what we are what we have here is, in somehow, followers of Islam are, is getting upset. Why? Because in the reality, Islam teaches something very disturbing and ugly. Not something actually. Lots of lots of lots of things which are disgusting and ugly and that's not enough people are being mm. accused oh you are bringing corruption to the land shut up we will we will treat you as if we will treat the bread or something and then we will put you into pieces and then from that we get to see allah who is full of wisdom almighty merciful gracious with all those qualities who doesn't know basic arabic can't even control his one and only book that's very damaging yeah. i think that's heartbreaking and to be honest with you sister i have some good news for our muslim audience uh our uh friend uh by the name of Eman jamal there was a guy a muslim uh person who used to call me on my live show he used to call christian prince we heard after one of my live shows about this very topic about the grammatical mistakes of the quran in the house quran this is house by the way that we're talking about i didn't even go to Arsh, i didn't go to qalun or al bazi or not we're talking about the house after one of my last live shows about this topic he decided after debating us many times he, he told us that he left islam and one of the reasons was my live show about the grammatical mistakes of Allah and his prophet in the Quran. So we have good news. He left Islam and he became a Christian. Hallelujah. So Praise Muslims, God. if he can leave Islam by seeing the truth that we are putting on the screen, why can't you? It's your salvation. We are not forcing anybody uh, and using the sword of Muhammad on your neck to become Christians. But it's the truth that we can only share with you nothing but the truth and only the truth will prevail i've got i've got individuals who are leaving islam because of the holes in the narrative and mm -hmm. it's not only because holes in the narrative but also they are disappointed that those videos are being taken down from their original channels so that's like oh they lie to me people like me they lie to you so people are very much upset about it yes so, well, it is what it is, sister. You know, uh, Islam, Islam. If if we go to the Islamic books, we go to the Hadith, we go to the Fatwas, we can see that Islam cannot be, cannot be from the real Creator, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because Islam itself, Muhammad himself, would be a huge insult towards God. So, Muslims, please leave Islam, drop Muhammad, and stop claiming that the Quran is perfect. Stop listening to your muftis and shuyukh who are issuing fatwas to tying baby 
babies, infants, even two-year-old babies are not safe from Muslim hands. You, according to Islam, you're allowed, not only Shia, but also Sunni Islam, you're allowed to die a two-year-old baby, even much younger than that. Um, brother, let me, bring, up. let me bring up a question to you. So, um, when we look at the word um, Quran with the Daga Elif and with full Elif, mm -hmm. um, I think question comes because of that. I think in Arabic, Tashkil mm -hmm. can be written like this. Please explain. Yeah, the thing is... Uh, Elif is not Tashkil. If we, go, if we go to the skeleton, right? The skeleton text. Remember, the Quran was written in the 7th century, according to Islam, by the order of Uthman. Tashkil, vowels, and dotting did not exist at that time. So, as we showed you, uh, if you can show it again on the screen, sister, chapter 12, ayah 2, and if you uh, compare it with uh, chapter 39 uh, and that ayah, you will see, you will see that without the vowels, without tashkil, without the tanqeed, Without the dotting and, and, and vowels, we can understand that, that that small baby elf, I like I like to call it the, the above one, that small baby elf did not exist. So you had to call it Quran, not Quran. You had to say Quran in chapter 12, ayah 2. So much later, much later in the 8th, 9th, 10th century, they started to change the Arabic text and we see for the very first time, much later after Uthman, that the Arabic standardization is changing. Vowels and dotting started to appear in the text. So the skeleton text, the so-called Uthmanic text, did not have tanqeet, did not have dotting, did, have no, did not have vowels. So if we go back, we have to go back to the Uthmanic text. There is no dots, there are no vowels. So we have to read it as Quran, right? Quran versus Quran. Quran and Quran, right? So Quran versus Quran. Which one is correct? Chapter 12, ayah 2. And like I said, more than 67 times we see that written like this, the above way. So if I'm not mistaken, 68 times, 68 times it's written without an elif. Without an elif. So there is uh, some grammar help needed. Yes, um, so... They had to fix it. They had to fix it with vowels and dotting, right? Um, there was a comment regarding um, someone expressed how sad it is that um, heart of Muslims are hardened. Um, I, I strongly actually disagree with you on that. Yes, there are some individuals who are in the business of Islam in the intention of making money. But if you look at the if you look at the Muslim world, like Brother Rock Christian just expressed like an individual who left Islam, uh, individual who left Islam, with, if you look at the bigger, um, if you look at the bigger, bigger Muslim world, I know hundreds of ex-Muslims just who are based in England. I know just from YouTube, over a couple of hundred ex-Muslims who left Islam, so it's not their hearts are being hardened, but they never heard the alternative. When they were child, they were given for marriage. And the man who had a nikah with them, he was tightening them or fondling them. And they, from early age, they saw their father beats their mom. Oh, that's like, oh, that's how it is. Once I marry, my husband is going to beat me. From early age, they saw, oh, it's all right to be raped in marriage. From very early age, they learn how to call other individuals with the different names or name callings. From that early age, they learn those things, and there is no one who can give them the alternative. Sadly, it is heartbreaking reality, even though our reason Lord doesn't need us, but it is heartbreaking reality as a Christian. We are just standing back and coming alongside of that. We are not stepping up and saying, oh, that is wrong. Let me give you the good news. Lots of those people never heard the alternative. 
I know a philosopher Muslim who teaches a philosophy and by definition he teaches people to question every word yet he never questioned Islam because he grew up in a place everyone is Muslim and there is no any other alternative and as a well-educated man who teaches philosophy at university he didn't even thought oh there is something wrong to beat his wife he didn't even thought oh yeah let me check the Muhammad's life but once people are exposed how ugly, disturbing, and disgusting this ideology is. They start thinking it. It's not their hearts are being hardened. Yes, we do have missionaries who are making those things for money. But the majority of Muslims really don't know what their ideology is teaching. Put hole in your Quran. Don't do that. But I, I'll do that. Like I, I've got the Quran which has holes in it. And then I take that Quran to mosque. You know what Muslims are telling me? Oh, why there is holes? And then that gives you opportunity to tell, look, you've been lied. You've been lied for centuries and centuries. Yeah. That makes them to think. It's not their hearts are being hardened. They are hungry for the perfect eternal word of God. They are hungry for the perfect eternal word of God doesn't have like spelling mistakes in it. They are hungry for perfect eternal word of God who gives them the heart of God. But there are not enough individuals who are exposing the ideology and introducing our glorious gospel. Therefore, their hearts are so far not hardened but close. Until an individual steps in, whom God is going to use to transform the lives. That's, that's how it is. Yeah. Sister, by the way, there's a Muslim guy by the name of Ali, Ali in the live chat. He says, Etro Christian, you are more ignorant than you know. You said Aisha was six when Muhammad fondled with her. I didn't say fondled. I said tying her, tying her. But Hadith says that Aisha was on her periods when Muhammad told her to wrap herself. Think, man. So he's asking me to think. No, no, you think, right? Because if we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 302, again, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 302, it says, Aisha said, whenever Allah's Messenger wanted to have sex with any of us, as are the wives, during their period, he commanded her, one of his wives, to put on a waist wrapper, then have sex with her. So here, sex means in the Arabic, yubashiruha, which is also another word for yumarisa jins, yumarisa jins, which is having sex. So having sex on top of the waist wrapper, underneath the, the waist wrapper, around the waist wrapper, sex means sex. If, you, if, if Muhammad wants to choose to tie, or, or enter his wife, that's his choice. But Muhammad was having sex. Sex is crystal clear language. Muhammad used to tie his wives. Muhammad used to have sex with his wives where they were on their periods. Sayyid Bukhari, hadith number 302. And sister, if you can put again the fatwa, the Sunni fatwa on the screen. Maybe this person came much later. You can put it again on the screen and so that he can see it. It says clearly, let us read it again. The Muslim is asking to the, to the Mufti of, the, of Islam, can you explain to me the thing called tying? What is tying? This Muslim person is asking. And this is the, the fatwa number is on, is on the screen above. And this is for a fatwa from the year 2006. And we took a screenshot from Islam web website. All praise to Allah. And he continues, blah, blah, blah. Muhammad is a slave, blah, blah. And then he continues, he says, the term tying means to have foreplay with the wife in between her thighs. Did you catch it? It is reported in one narration that when Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah spring on him, wanted to enjoy one of his wives who was in menstruation. What means to enjoy his wives? 
to have sexual activity with her, sexually enjoy her. So he wanted to enjoy one of his wives who was in menstruation. He put a piece of cloth on her vagina, i.e. cover it. This is in Sunan Ibn Majah. The author of Fayd al-Qadir interpreted the expression if he wanted to enjoy meaning, that means having all permissible foreplay, but avoiding the vagina or the anus, like in between her thighs. So did Muhammad tie his six-year-old wife, Aisha? Yes, because she was his wife and he was permissible. He was allowed to tying six-year baby girl Aisha. Then when she became older, at the age of nine, three years later, he split her in half. And I'm using really political correct language. If any of you wonder, I hope some of you do wonder why we are talking about such topics. Because uh, it is it is a disturbing topic and it is 18 plus topic. Um, I'm guessing Rob Christian is already 18 plus. Um, so, uh, but... Last time I checked, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but... It is in the Islamic sources and it is causing damage to humanity. Yes. That's why we are discussing those things. That We are discussing those things that it opens our hearts and our minds as a Christian. It will give us hunger. So we expose this ideology in the intention that individuals becomes the lover of Lord Jesus Christ. That is the intention. Otherwise, there are like... Those languages, I don't even use them. I don't even know how to use those words. But as you deal with Islam, you've got like books just talking about those those parts of the, like especially chapters are given in, in the intention of talking about such a topics. And it becomes double disturbing. So it is difficult to ignore when you see it is causing damage to humanity. And it is difficult to turn blind eye because as a Christian we are told we can't just turn blind eye to those things. We need to, we need to, people are calling me through Skype. We need to be standing, we need to be people who stands up for justice because our God doesn't like unjust things. Therefore we, we feel we are under the obligation to speak and expose this ideology. But yes, those are disturbing things if any of you kind of wondering why we are spending the evening to talk about what man is doing a child yeah. Yeah, That's sister, the reason. I, can i add something on top of what you said we have another muslim in the chat he says rob christian you cannot read it says the prophet if he wanted to enjoy one of his wives now last time i checked aisha at the age of six according to sahel bukhari According to Sahih al-Bukhari, at the age of six, he married her. She became his wife. Since, since Aisha could not have menstruation, that does not mean that he cannot have sexually enjoyment with her. In this case, tire. The hadith is talking about the women, the wives of Muhammad, who were older than Aisha. But as long as Aisha is his wife, he was still allowed to tie her because he could not enter her and, and they call it fondling. Muhammad used to fondle Aisha. That's what they use as political correct statement for tying. So yes, Muhammad was tying Aisha at the age of six. The rest of the wives who could actually menstruate, he used to maybe tie or Allah alam what he used to do more. But yes, Aisha was being used for Muhammad's sexual enjoyment at the age of six. Good sister. Welcome to the world of Islam. Yeah. Welcome to the exactly. world of Islam. So, Mr. Kilio is calling. Um, dear Mr. Kilio, I've got Skype guest, therefore I cannot take calls right now. Um, let me go to chat and then see if there are any comments in the chat. Sure. 
or the questions if you picked up brother you can bring them up as well yeah we we you know addressed uh, two muslims one of them was jason Bourne, and the other guy was ali uh, and, you know, maybe Ali is Shia. Uh, maybe Ali is Shia. Maybe you can put uh, slide number uh, five again. If he's Shia, we can't smell from the name if he's Shia or not. But let's assume that he's Shia. According to the book of Khomeini, who is <laughs> allowed to issue fatwas, if you can put it on a screen, it says the following, right? It says the following, ruling number 12. <laughs> and we can find it in this in his book, Tahrir al Wasila, volume two, page two hundred twenty one and two hundred twenty two. It says, ruling number twelve. It is not permissible to have intercourse before her being nine years old. So you're not allowed to enter a nine a baby before the the year of nine at the age of nine. But but if you are married to a baby, let's say she's two, two years. Let's say she's six months. This is Shia, by the way, guys. But it in nikah or temporary marriage, muta. And as for all the other pleasures, such as lustful touch, embracing, and al tafkhid tying, there is no problem in tying with a suckling baby, a suckling infant. This is the Shia. Point of view. This is the book of Tahrir al Wasila of Khomeini. Tahrir al Wasila, volume 2, page 221, 222. And the term is tying. How old? Six months baby. One month baby. I don't care. As long as she is not nine years old, till that age, you are allowed to do tying to the baby. So, Muslims, really? This is. This is a religion from God, or is this a created sex cult to rape babies? What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. One of the things is, um, there is a big debate regarding the Sunnis and Shias, which one is like true Islam. And sad reality is they do not even agree on the biography of Muhammad. They do not even agree on the customs of Muhammad. They are they don't even agree what Muhammad said and what Muhammad did, how he lived his life. But they agree on how to abuse a child. And then they give you the practical tips how to do that. See? Yeah. Even Sunnis and Shias can find common ground when it comes to abusing the child. Exactly. Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims, they are desperate. They are desperate for crucified and risen Lord. Wow. Please, Muslims, wake up. Please leave this sex cult of Muhammad. This man-made created cult for the sexual desires of Muhammad. Remember what Aisha used to say to Muhammad? Ma ara rabbuka illa yusara fi hawaka ya Muhammad. Aisha used to say. What does that mean in English? I see. Uh -huh. Aisha used to say. I see that your Lord is hastening. He is running to fulfill your desires. In this case, your sexual desires. Aisha was not stupid. She knew. She knew. Brother. So he is one of the awesome rebuttal for you. Okay. Now. Mm -hmm. You, 533 should be practiced because you intentionally caused corruption in the land. Okay? So when the individuals are putting those fatwas, okay, who cares about them? Because mm. end of the day, these followers of Islam are following Muhammad, Quran, and customs of Muhammad from the Hadith. Yes. So, Fatwa has nothing to do with Islam. It's just a bunch of scholars who simply comes up with their ideas. Yeah. As, and Muhammad has nothing to do with such a teachings. Did you catch what Ali is saying? He's throwing all the muftis <laughs> who are leaders of mosques under the bus just to cherry pick what he likes about Islam and what he doesn't like. So now we should throw all the muftis under the bus 
and accept what Ali says about Islam. Ali, compared to the Muftis, compared to the Mufti of the Shia cult, compared to the Mufti of the Sunni cult, who are you, Ali, compared to them? Who are you? You are a nobody compared to them. So should we listen to the Muftis who are issuing fatwas to rape babies by tying them? Or should we listen to you, Ali? <laughs> and other thing is like those fatwas are not coming from someone who turned out of blue or out of p pink. They, those are the people who studied your Islam and has authority to teach you as well as they simply take it from, from what? From the teachings of your beloved prophet. Mm. Okay. No, Ali, Ali, you are in denial. You know, Ali and people like Ali, you people are in denial. We showed you the evidence. We went to the Quran. We showed the, the grammatical mistakes in the Quran. You can rewatch it if you missed it. We showed that Allah cannot even choose how to write the Quran, the name of his so-called perfect, uncorrupted book. Not even one letter is changed. He cannot even choose to write it with an alif or without an alif in the middle. So, and, and we, we discussed rape of babies, which they call time. It's on you, Muslims. It's on you. We actually cannot choose for you if you want to stay in this sex cult of Muhammad or leave it and come back home to my Lord and your Lord, Jesus Christ, the name above name, who would never allow such filth. This is disgusting. This is inhumane. This is a 7th century barbaric activity to do it to babies like that. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to come up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, I want to put up a couple of... On the screen, a couple of things of this... Um, these lovely teachings, but it's very old file. Let me try it again. Mm-hmm. So I am guessing you are able to see the screen I have. Um, yes, it takes a little bit some time 20, to see it. Yeah, it, it takes 20 seconds, 20 seconds. So according to them, according to this Sahib Kari, 717. When I got married, yes. Allah's, messen Allah's uh, apostle said to me, what type of lady have you married? I replied. I married. Sorry, I replied. I have married a matron. He said. Why do you. Sorry. Why don't you liking for the virgins. And for fondling mm -hmm. them. Yes. Why didn't you marry a young girl. So that you may. You might play with her. Of course, as, as it says play, it is not talking about play hide and seek. No, it's not play, uh, saying to play with dolls, because remember that's a haram in Islam. It's talking about... <clears throat> <clears throat> that's what it means, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it means. I can't believe maybe, that. Maybe, uh, you know, play in, in bed, maybe they have hide and seek, maybe they have big beds back in the old days, but... Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, what it means. And then another one. Joining the manses, he used to order me to put on a izar and used to, the, uh, the translation says fondle, but actually the word is not fondle. Me. No, it's yubashiruha. Yubashiruha. Yeah. Right? Yubashiruha means to have sex with her, sexual activity with her. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we don't know what Muhammad used to do. And... I know I have always asked myself this, uh, Sister Hatun. Why would, why would the wives of Muhammad? This is really uh, a question that any Muslim, any Christian ask himself. Why would the mother of the believers, is it Aisha or Maimuna or Hafza, whatever one of his wives, 
why would this, the most respected women in Islam, the mother of the believers, go around and share the sexual activities between them and their husband Muhammad? What kind of women are those women, man? Imagine, and they call them the mothers of the believers. Why would the mother of the believers talk about their sexual activity, their sexual games with Muhammad and share them with the Sahaba? Muslims think, why would someone do that if this is a so-called respectful woman? This should actually say something about the wives of Muhammad because they are sharing their intimate activities with Muhammad with all the people of Mecca and Medina. And it's Sunnah. I mean, if, if it, let's say it's 2020, if a woman uh, goes on the street now and says, you know what I did yesterday with my husband? Everybody would call her at least a slut or something. But because they are the mother of all the believers, suddenly it's okay that to, to, to share everybody, to tell everybody, hey, you know what Muhammad did yesterday with me? He put uh, you know a waist wrapper around me and he started to yubash uh, right? Which means to <clears throat> hang with me. Why would any mother of the believers share that information with anybody? Think, Muslim, think. This is, this is Islam or this is a religion of sex? If you think about it, like, apparently, Muhammad is the walking Quran, okay? Everything he says and he does with the desire of Allah. And even yesterday, Muslim missionaries were like, telling oh, how, why people need to follow Muhammad because he's this perfect example. He doesn't speak his own, but everything comes from Allah, what he says and does. And with all of his wisdom, like if you think as a Muslim mind, okay, Allah is the one, Allah is the one um, who kind of is capable to create the amazing body you have, how your body works, okay? That makes him super clever and he lives everything he lives in that brain in somewhere and then he gives directions to the individuals how when how can they have sex with a child and the, for, especially for the child who is not developed yet mm. people it is ugly it is ugly it is ugly and it should not be there. What kind of God like does this? He mm. should be doing something useful. Like get the history correct. Yeah, and what, what kind of women are those women to share their intimate activities with her with their husband Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, to share it all around Mecca and Medina? Hey, Aisha saying, hey, Hafza Hafza saying, hey, Maimuna is saying, hey, you know what I did yesterday with my husband Muhammad? I had sex with him. I mean, come on. Even Muslims. That doesn't even happen in 21st century movies. You know that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In 21st century movies, people don't go around and then tell others. Oh, let me tell you what kind of things I've done with my husband yesterday. Yet yeah. in 7th century, there is no Las Vegas yet. While Muhammad <laughs> give, while Muhammad kind of offers people Las Vegas. That's what people are discussing around. Yeah, this is what my husband did to me. Oh, would you like me to show you this um, signs or symbols of these things? Look, how this is how it happened. Yeah, the details. Let us go to the details. <laughs> yeah, and why yeah. would the Sahaba want to know about this? It seems that they were so proud uh, that Muhammad had the sexual power, brother, of 30 men. Do you know, brother? Muhammad had the sexual power of 30 horses. I mean, men. I mean, Muhammad must have been the Italian stallion of his time, man. Rocky Balboa himself. 30 men power. I mean, we have cars uh, today that can, uh, you know, uh, run uh, for 30 uh, or more uh, horses, but Muhammad was the horse, the Italian stallion horse of his time, man. The Italian stallion Muhammad. Uh, why do we? Why do? Why does anyone want to know 
uh, about the sexual activities of the Prophet and his wife. Think, Muslims, this is actually created to make Muhammad look like an awesome, sexually powerful man. This is a religion? How dare you to call this a religion, Muslims? Think. Use your brains, please. Someone is saying 30 donkeys. Uh, please don't go to the donkeys, man. Don't insult the donkeys, please. I do hope that um, people are finding those things disturbing. Because once we see how disturbing it is, it will help us to see how damaging it is to humanity. And from that, it will challenge us to go and preach our glorious gospel by exposing this ideology and giving the perfect examples of God, man, Lord Jesus Christ. Because there is no any other way. There is no any other way. Yeah. Please, please leave Islam, my, my friends. Uh, we don't... Uh, I, what I want to say, sister, to the Muslims who are watching, Muslims, sometimes you think that we Christians hate you. We don't hate you. We hate your teaching. We hate the teaching of Muhammad. We hate Islam because it's destroying your brains. It's making you like the walking dead zombies. Use your God-given brains. Don't follow the barbaric, savage teaching of the Prophet of Islam that was in 7th century. W wake up. No sane person should accept or respect the fact that Islam teaches to have sex with children, with babies, tying them. Tying them. Please wake up. And once you wake up, please make sure you wake your child up as well. You don't want your next generation to hear those, th those things. And even you don't want your next generation to practice or be victim of such a thing. Exactly. So what I can do is I can take last couple of comments or questions and then we will finish the evening. So if you want to put your last couple of your comments or questions, please be kind and put DCCI at in front of DCCI ministries and then I'll take them and then we can use Brother Rob Christian to answer those questions. Yeah, that would be nice if we can answer a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, maybe there's something that you want to know or... So there is a question on, do the young children need to be alive? Again, do the what? Do the young children need to be yes. alive? Uh, <laughs> are you saying, uh, is he talking basically about necrophilia? Yeah, I think that's the kind of background. Uh, but... Sorry, sorry. I, you know, I don't want to go there. Please don't. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't want to. I don't want to know. It's already disgusting enough to know that in Islam you are allowed to tie a baby, even a two-year-old baby, let alone necrophilia. I know. I know that uh, you know. Back in the old days, in the time of Muhammad in the seventh century, Muhammad told the Sahaba that they could lie with their wives in their graves. But if it's a baby who is two years, Allahu A'lam, if it's a baby, God forbid, who died at the age of two or maybe one, maybe a one month, maybe it was a six baby, sick baby, and you want to <clears throat> lie with her, yeah, it, it could be allowed. But, you know, I don't want to go into, you know, there is couple it's too disgusting of, already. There is a couple of comments are coming. Um, but I'll just put them in a question form. So, um, according to Muslims, Muhammad mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, 18, like a Moses. Okay? When you just look at this, such a teachings of Muhammad and such a practice of Muhammad, mm -hmm. how can you come still think Muhammad might be, might be like Moses? Like, for example, this, um, having sex with a child, tightening a child, those kind of things. Any comments, brother? Yes. Uh, according to the to the Bible, uh, it's an evil sin, a sin from Satan to do 
uh, uh, you know, abuse a child. That's number one. Number two, God of Abraham, Isaac, is, and Jacob has a name. His name is Jehovah, right? The I am that I am. When Moses asked, tell me, who should I say? He asked Jehovah, God, who should I say that sent me? He said, the I am has sent you. Jehovah has sent you. But when we look into Islam, we can't find the name of Jehovah. On top of that, one of the criteria is also that Moses, according to, you know, Muslims love to go to Deuteronomy 1818. One of the criteria is that Muhammad should have talked face to face to his Lord. Did Muhammad do that? No. Moses talked face to face to God. That's one of the criteria. Another criteria is to be a prophet like Moses, you have to do miracles. Did Muhammad do any miracles? No. Chapter 17, Ayah 59. Again, chapter 17, Ayah 59 of the Quran. Again, chapter 17, Ayah 59 of the Quran clearly says, we refrain from sending down signs. So did Muhammad do any miracles according to the Quran? No. So Muhammad failed on all three criteria. Muhammad didn't use the name of Jehovah. He didn't preach in the name of Jehovah. He preached in the name of Allah. And he even was influenced by Satan. Remember the satanic verses. He got the commands from Satan. Right? That was a different God. Allah is a different God. Satan is, uh, is the, the, the God of Islam. Number two. Muhammad did not talk face to face like Moses with his God. And number three, he did not do miracles like Moses. So Muhammad fails all three criteria. Um, thank you very much for that, brother. Um, Steve, um, the, re regarding the comment you put forward, we did a couple of sessions on that topic. Um, please, please find the videos to watch them. We did live streams or have... Um, how you can marry with marry with your daughter um, who is not in under the um, Zawash under the Nikah um, brother um, another quick question for you so yeah. as we are talking about those topics and uh, which is kind of causing corruption in the land yes but also people are asking those topics are very disgusting Yes. Um, how can I discuss those topics with my Muslim friend? Have you got any practical evangelist tip for that? Well, uh, you know, not everybody, uh, uh, you know, uh, has the stomach to talk about such topics. But, you know, uh, I come uh, from the Middle East and the people who live in the Middle East uh, don't care about that, you know, uh, they talk about all kind of topics. Here in the West, maybe people uh, have a different uh, morality or different thinking. But, you know, it's Islam. It's Islam. Uh, I mean, the moment we start to talk about Islam and we go uh, see and read about the life of Muhammad, all we can find is sexual activities with women, with children, with baby Aisha, six-year-old, tying her. I mean, it's Islam. Uh, if you want to discuss and debate Islam, you can't avoid such topics. It's Islam, right? It's Islam. Just go to the Quran, chapter 4, ayah 24, uh, what your right hand possesses. Malakat aymanakum, what your right hand possesses. So, uh, I mean, sex slaves. Sex slaves. It's Islam. What can we do? You, you want to uh, talk about Islam? You can't avoid it. The fact that you need to talk about such topics. It's Islam. If you don't want to talk about Islam, don't go there. Maybe it's not for you. If if you already, just add what Rob Christian said, if you already had, have a Muslim friend, then by definition, you are already sharing cup of tea, cup of coffee, hot chocolate, movie nights, lunch, dinner. You're already sharing a little bit life with them. Yeah. Therefore, you should be more concerned on how do I share the truth of my glorious God? And one of the things is you can just simply um, drop me email. Like I am happy to send the screenshots of those or the, some of the materials I do have regarding the fatwa and 
um, this fondling tightening thing. Just take it with you and then tell to your Muslim friend. You are already friend with that person. <coughs> Dear my lovely friend, Miss Muslim, look, I was reading this and it says it's fat fatwa i was reading this it says it is from sahih bukhari that means it's from the life of muhammad and i am very much disturbed how do you how do you handle this what is your intake please explain that to me and then let person read it and then unpack for it all you've got to do is simply asking the question is this the best example how would you feel if that is happening to your child? How would you feel? Can you imagine this has happened to your mom? Just bring them to the into the picture after let them to read it and then ask simple questions. Like you already told me like you are disturbed by this. It is disturbing and you are sharing. I am disturbed by this by my dear my Muslim friend. How can you yeah, follow such ideology? Is, yeah. Exactly, sister. You know, the funny thing is when we study the life of Muhammad, there are so many disgusting things that we find what he did to people. For example, Muslims always say, Muhammad never cut down any tree. He never burned trees. But when we go study the Islamic sources, we see that Muhammad burned and cut down the trees of Bani Nadir, who were a Jewish tribe. Not only did he cut down their trees and burn them, he even expelled them. On top of that, Kinana, who was one of the Jewish leaders, he, he, he just married Safiya. He was a young groom with his young wife. They were married for one day. What did Muhammad do? He attacked their village. He attacked the Jews. And he tortured Kinana. Muslims always say Muhammad never hit anyone. He never tortured anyone. Muhammad tortured the man and he tortured Kinana. He even asked one of his companions to make a iron rod to make it hot, to burn it, make it as hot as possible. And they and Muhammad commanded the Sahabi, the companion, to burn the chest of Kinana so that Kinana can tell them where the treasure is, where the gold and the money is. So Muhammad tortured the man, and not as if that not enough. He, he, uh, they cut off his head, they cut off the head of Kinana, and Muhammad took Safiya and he raped her on the same night that he tortured and killed her husband, her young husband Kinana. He raped her on the same night. Now tell me Muslims, is there any sane woman who would fall in love with Muhammad after Muhammad killing her husband killing her father, killing her uncles and cousins, and enslave all the women of her tribe. Are you going to say that Safiya fell in love for, with Muhammad for torturing and killing and stealing the money of the, of the Jewish village? Please wake up. Please wake up. Um, Rob Christian, someone wants me to. Um, bring to your attention Halal and Marriage Facebook page. Oh yeah. boy. Have oh you boy. seen it? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't see, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't see this Facebook account or page, but I know about Halal and Marriage. I know if you, in Islam, you divorce your wife, you say, talq, 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 three times. I remember Muhammad had to say everything three times. Every time he went to someone, and he had to say to him, Salamu Alaikum, Salamu Alaikum, Salam. Every, everything is three. I wonder why. So if you in Islam say to your wife, Talaq, 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 you are divorced, you are divorced, you are divorced three times. You, if you for some reason feel bad and you want to come back to your wife, or your wife wants to come back to you and you maybe you forgive each other, you cannot come back. Wow. So what ha must happen, that wife must, after you divorced her, she must marry another person. And if she's lucky, if she's lucky, that new husband says again, talaq, 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 then and only then she can go back to her first husband. 
This is a true love story, brother. This is the true love between a man and his wife in Islam. Someone else needs to taste the juice of your wife because she, be, before she can come back to you. This is the love story of Islam between a husband and his wife? Yes, brother. This is Islam 101. Um, there is a comment, sorry, um, there is individual in the chat apparently expressing that he's been timed out because he's been talking about LGBT. Oh, well, that's not mm. the topic we are discussing, so I wouldn't be surprised that you've been timed out for that. We are talking about um, this fondling and the, what's happening with the teachings of Islam. Um, that might be the reason that why you've been timed out so um so i i'm i'm there is a comment on the screen from jason he's saying that's how i lost all my friends i don't know the context but i'm assuming probably you are talking when we said oh take all those sources and then ask your muslim friends what they think about it yeah um, can i comment on that sister yes if it's okay with you yeah, yeah. yeah. uh i i find it uh funny but at the same time a huge hip hypocrisy from those muslims who call you their friends because according to the quran you are not allowed in islam to have christian friends so this must say something about those muslims who are not following the quran and the sunnah of muhammad because remember muhammad said in the hadith if you see a let's say a jew or a Christian on the road, drive him to the nearest of the road. So drive him to the most dirtiest place. And remember, back in the old days, you don't have roads or you know a, a sewer sewer system like today. So the the sewage, the garbage, was on the side of the road. So drive them, drive the Jews and the, and the Christians to the side. Let them let their feet and and sandals touch the the garbage. But you should not say hello first to them. Drive them as far as possible to the nearest of the road. So what? So if they call you their friend, that means they are hypocrites. They are munafiqun. They are not even obeying the Quran and the Sunnah of that Prophet. But what else is new? What else is new? Um. Other thing is, um, just add what Brother Rob Christian said. We are not there to be friends with them. Our intention is we want them to be friends with our risen Lord. People Amen. will reject me. People don't like me. That's absolutely fine. But we want them to fall in love with Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Amen. Jesus Christ already given his friendship hand to them. That's our focus. Yes, you will lose one friend. But another beloved one will pick that person and then help that person by the grace of God to come and bow down to Lord Jesus Christ. And if individuals are not being friend with you because you expressed how disturbing you are finding the Islamic sources, leave them to God and he will deal with them because end of the day, it is we have a God who is faithful, who keeps his promises and he says, one day every knee is gonna bow down to him every knee that's like every knee and one day every tongue is gonna confess christ is the lord Amen. every tongue is gonna do that so the friends you lost or the friends you lost others gained they yeah. will have to express who christ is they will have to confess who Christ is one day. So you will lose this friend, but do pray for them that they become friend with Lord Jesus Christ through other individuals. You will you will sit one seat, other person will do another seat, and then someone else will harvest that. That's absolutely fine. Our intention is, if someone becomes friend with me, friend with me, that's a good thing. I will have. A friend who I go and have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, or I don't know, look at the flowers, or go and watch gaze the sky, those those kind of things. But I can't, I cannot take them to heaven. I cannot place them in the bosom of the Father. That is, 
the work of Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you want individuals to fall in love with Lord Jesus Christ. You want individuals to be friend with Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So yeah, don't dwell that. on those things. Add those people in your prayer book and pray for their salvation day after day, day after day. And our crucified and risen Lord will take care of it. Yeah. Uh, sister, uh, I want to add also uh, a thing uh, to uh, what has been said. When uh, Omar bin al Khattab, Omar al -Khattab, ibn al Khattab, when he was uh, the caliph, he forced conditions of the Christians. Right? He forced conditions on the Christians. This is the pact of Omar, guys. This is the pact of Omar, and you can find it in uh, the tafsir of Ibn Kathir for chapter 9, ayah 28 and 29. Again, tafsir Ibn Kathir, chapter 9, ayah 28 to 29. 28-29 from chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Uthman forced conditions on the Christians, and the conditions ensured their continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace. Of who? Of the Christians. If you see the Christians, you must force them to the nearest of the road. The Christians are not allowed to even dry, drive or sit on uh, uh, a horse. We have to cut the front part of our hair. We must wear a, how do you call it in English? Uh, a, 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 around our rest, a waist. Uh, we have to, uh, we, we have to put a different kind of clothing than the Muslims. So what what kind of hypocrite friends you must have be who are not obeying the most well-known sources of Islam? And this is from the Pact of Omar. You can find it in, in, in Ibn Kathir, Tafsir for chapter 9, ayah 28, 29. So... These Muslims need to repent and they should come back to Islam if they really want to call themselves Muslims. And if you actually don't want to listen to Islamic rules, leave Islam, join Muhammad, come back home to Jesus Christ, your Lord and my Lord. Um, sir, just to attend, getting atten attention that there is a corruption in the chat between a couple of individuals regarding like words are going um, forward and coming back. Doesn't matter who you are. So right now, please stick on the topic we are discussing. When your time comes, you will have the platform to speak what you want to speak. But right now, please, please engage with the conversations we are taking, we are discussing. Um, Sorry, yes, now I sir. forgot. Sorry, now I forgot where I left the question. Yeah, we were talking about uh, you know the comments that the Muslims, uh, you know, they left this uh, Christian uh, because he was debating them and uh, he was showing them the true face of Islam, yeah. and because they could not handle the Islamic sources that he was mentioning. Uh, they left, you know, uh, they didn't uh, want to be friends with them yeah. because simply they cannot handle the truth. They will, uh, you know, a lot of Muslims who do not know the Islamic sources, who do not know the real Islam, they think they have always learned that Islam is peaceful, Islam, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, abolished slavery, but uh, they don't know that Muhammad used to own a lot of black slaves. He traded slaves, he bought slaves. And not only that, he had sex with slaves. You know, Muslims, poor Muslims who do not know Islam, they are born in the Muslim families. They have been blindly taught that Muhammad was the best of example. Muhammad never hit anyone. Muhammad never cut down trees. Muhammad never tortured people. But when we see and read Islamic sources, it's the opposite what we can find. Um just a just a practical thing just a practical thing yes. for us to remember it is 
it is the work of our risen Lord. And sadly, sadly, lots of Muslims don't know what they believe. And the moment a Christian turns up and then asks them, oh, would you do this? Your prophet did this. Or what do you think about what your prophet did? You are not expect like no one will bring you roses and flowers. If Rob Christian comes to me and then tells me something which I never heard before, I'm going to get offended by it. I'm not going to say, oh, let me get you hot chocolate. Let me buy you falafel. Of course, people are going to get offended. Of course, it's going to affect your relationship. But as I said, our goal is bringing them. Our goal is letting Lord Jesus Christ introduce himself. And he can do that in many different ways. Good thing is, good yet very sad thing is, our crucified and risen Lord doesn't need us. He can do much better job without us, yet he is willing to use us. So we we need to be faithful to that. We need to be faithful to that. Yeah, it's 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 really uh, sad and uh, it's disturbing that when you show the Islamic sources, you show the ayahs, you show the hadith, tafsir, instead of Muslims actually doing their homework and see if if we Christians. When we bring up these topics, instead of doing your homework and see, hey, is Sister Hatun or is Rob Christian actually lying? Instead of doing their homework and see and go and study if you are lying or not, they become angry with us. You should actually be angry with Muhammad, his sunnah, the Quran of Allah, right? Because if we study the life of Muhammad and we go to Tafsir al-Qurtubi, for example, to Surah chapter chapter 33, ayah 50 of the Quran, we see that Muhammad, according to Tafsir al-Qurtubi, Muhammad had 16 privileges. 16 privileges, which no Muslim had. One of these 16 privileges of Muhammad is, and in this case, number 10, if Muhammad looks at a married woman, Muhammad must immediately divorce her. If she is a married woman, Muhammad... Oh, sorry, uh, her husband. husband must immediately divorce her and hand her to Muhammad so that Muhammad can do nikah to her. Why? Why only Muhammad had these privileges? Why not you? And wh- what kind of prophet is this to lust for a married woman? And where is the guts of these men to say, no, no, Muhammad, how dare you to lust for my wife? As if they had any choice. So they had to divorce their wives and give them to Muhammad. This is the number 10 privilege according to Tafsir al-Qurtubi for chapter 33, ayah 50. Chapter 33, ayah 50. Tafsir al-Qurtubi. Yeah, I think this is disgusting. This cannot, be, this cannot be the prophet of God. Sorry. This we cannot did, be a prophet of God. Yeah, we did a couple of sessions on that. People can go through all that list. Um, so, brother, mm-hmm. we've been going on for 1 hour 57 minutes 59 seconds. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I'm going to ask, ask you the conclusion question. Last question is coming from me. Um, mm-hmm. So since you've been um, spreading corruption in the land, okay? Yes. What are your plans from now on? Well, s- since the Allah of Islam is, you know, uh, loving it for me to expose him and his prophet, I will continue so. This is from the Islamic side. I don't believe in Muhammad. I don't believe in the Allah of Muhammad because I know and after studying for 15 years uh, and debating many and many Muslims, I came to the conclusion that this cannot be a prophet of God. This is nothing but a cult leader. And as long Allah says in his Quran uh, that it is he who is, uh, you know, allowing and it's his decree. His choice to allow someone like Rob Christian to cause corruption in the land, I will continue to do so. And at the same time, show everybody that Islam is nothing but a cult of Satan. And if they are open for it, we can share the gospel with them so that they can back home, come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because no one, no one can help you except Jesus. Please come back home, please. And thank you very much, Rob Christian. Uh, 
and also double thank you for um, being available um, and joining us actually I forgot I was gonna mention that in the beginning we were gonna do this live stream on Saturday but Rob Christian noticed that David Wood was gonna go live at 8 o'clock so we had to postpone today if anyone was, was waiting for him on Saturday that was the reason why we couldn't go ahead with that we didn't want to crash with David Wood um, so uh, being um, thank you very much for being available for us and helping us to think through those very disturbing, so very disturbing issues in Islam and hopefully it challenges us in the intention that we preach our glorious gospel and also we challenge the ideology and teachings of Islam and um, if anyone needs anything we kind of shoved on the screen um, please drop me or drop Rob Christian email we can send them out to you so that you can use it um, but let me just also remind something uh, maybe pe whatever you say whatever you think or however you verbalize certain things and people are taking that as you are bringing corruption in the land or you are spreading corruption in the land and something might happen to you something might not happen to you if something happens to you uh, good thing is good thing is as I expressed a little bit earlier our God doesn't need us he can do much better work without us and it is just privilege that he's willing to use us and there are certain things will never change there are certain things will never change our glorious gospel will reach in every house without us or with us it's gonna reach in every house with Rob Christian or without Rob Christian it's gonna reach in every house house where, where there is a child who is just being breastfed by mother it's gonna reach in a house where there is a man who is in 80s waiting to die it's gonna reach in a house where you've got the teachers philosophers uneducated people it's gonna reach in a house where there are blacks whites it's gonna reach in every house our glorious gospel is gonna reach in every house with with us or without us and our glorious God is gonna transform each lives for his kingdom that's gonna happen maybe drop Christian is spreading corruption in the land and people are not loving that and people are showing the knife but no one is gonna stop our glorious gospel no one Amen. no one is capable to do that Lamb of God is still upon the throne and he's waiting for everyone that's gonna happen so Rob Christian just be encouraged that you are putting um, corruption in the land in the intention that individuals will fall in love with our risen Lord so therefore Amen. I'll just say well done and thank you for doing that thank you for doing thank that you, God bless your ministry your awesome videos you are doing keep doing what you're doing sister uh, you know uh, I really uh, for you for me you're a really brave woman uh, continue you. what you're doing and as long God wants us to continue our work yes uh, God does not need us but if it's his plan for us to continue exposing falsehood expose false prophets like Muhammad and share the gospel with everybody then so be it as long God give us the breath of life in our lungs we will continue doing what we do and I want to thank our dear sister Hatun for uh, inviting me to do another live stream with her God bless you sister uh, God bless your loved ones, your ministry, and uh, Lord willing, we can do this in the future again. God bless our audience, uh, the subscribers, everybody who is supporting our dear sister. God bless you, your loved ones, your family. Stay safe. Muslims, please leave Islam and come back home. Please come back home to Jesus Christ, your Lord and my Lord. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. He is the King of Kings, the name above all names. Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, brother. 
and um, we will see you tomorrow on the live stream where um, we will talking about the knowledge of Allah and how people are trying to get rid of the hell we, we've got thought of Christ to do that and uh, beloved ones thank you very much for joining us and may our risen Lord silent you with his love and dear guests who don't know our trying God who don't know our risen Lord may he bring you on your knees so that you accept him as the eternal son of God who gave himself for you God bless you all we will see you tomorrow evening God bless bye bye